welcome folks uh let me see i think uh yeah i think uh, some of you are still pouring in uh in the chat room so welcome and uh yeah thanks for uh thanks for hopping in uh thank you elena for for hosting me and uh speakers throughout the day so uh hopefully you're having a great day uh it's uh it's been a lot of sessions a lot of content over two days so we're in the last stretches and uh thank you uh for hanging out here with me um, I got about 45 minutes and um, I can talk uh, about this stuff for a long time. So I'm, I'm going to try to keep it brief and uh, maybe try to do, um, do uh, show you some demos of where things may be heading. So if you are a .NET developer, um, this may be relevant to you. Or if, if you've never actually touched Xamarin or if you're just thinking about mobile strategies, this may maybe all, all be relevant, okay? So let us start. And uh, like Oluna said, feel free to uh, chime in with questions in the chat room. I can, uh, I'll keep an eye out and I'll try to answer them as we go or um, uh, get to them at the very end. So my name is uh, Sam Basu. Uh, that is my social handle across uh, Twitter, Skype, GitHub, you name it. So you know how to get hold of me. I am a dev advocate at uh, Progress Software. Uh, if you are uh, in the Microsoft and the .NET space, you may know some of the things we make, like uh, Telerik controls uh, and, and frameworks, Kinder UI, Fiddler. Uh, we are all about uh, developer productivity. Uh, but let's talk about uh, Xamarin Forms today. Um, I, uh, I think initially when we talked about the session, uh, it was a few months back and, and things have been constantly evolving. So I actually modified it, uh, things a little bit so I could show you a glimpse of where uh, some things are headed. Uh, Microsoft shares a lot more things uh, with uh, insiders and partners and MVPs. So uh, a lot more things are cooking, which is uh, very exciting. So let us, uh, let's dive in. Uh, before we start though, uh, I think we all got to acknowledge the year that we are living through. It's particularly difficult for a lot of people. So I hope uh, you and yours are being safe and, and happy and productive uh, and, and doing the best uh, we, can, we all can. And uh, since we are all kind of remote and uh, looking at screens, uh, I always include a map. Uh, that's where I'm at. I'm in Erie, Pennsylvania, a little town um, up by the five Great Lakes that we have in the US. Uh, there's a lake called Lake Erie and right next to it, there's a town called Erie, Pennsylvania. So it's, uh, uh, it's uh, good to be home. I've been a home uh, remote worker for a long time, but this feels very different because we are not traveling uh, at all. And uh, we are all trying to juggle work and, and family and childcare and all that stuff. So yeah, please take care. Uh, I so wish, and I think everybody does, that we could hang out in person in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, but again, hopefully soon next year. Um, so we are all trying to do the best we can. Okay, so before we kind of go into Xamarin and Xamarin Forms, let's talk about mobile. Let's take a step back. And this is kind of my like one minute spiel on all the different ways in which you can build for mobile. It doesn't always need to be an app. Uh, and it's a lot of choices that we have, and that's a good thing. So let's, let's kind of go down uh, through some of these things. Hang on. Okay, so uh, if you are trying to build a native app, with uh, iOS or, or Android or, or um, Windows devices, you always can. Uh, that's, that's a native app story and you're closest to the metal. It's great, but it's difficult. It's, it's pricey because you are having to maintain like three different code bases towards maintaining a single app, right? So it's difficult for us indi uh, individual developer. It's harder for enterprises to maintain so much as well. So we really in 2020, we are looking for a cross-platform story, hopefully. Uh, again, I mean, native has a space, like if you're doing games or other things, then absolutely go native. But for everything else, you uh, should look at the cross-platform story quite a bit as well. So in terms of um, where things land, uh, if you are building web applications today, um, then you can stick to the web technologies. You don't have to do .NET, which is what we'll spend time on. Uh, if you are building a website today, there is no reason it cannot work nicely on a mobile device. There are lots and lots of frameworks that help you out. Uh, Twitter Bootstrap, Angular, and all of the SPA frameworks. Uh, Blazor, we'll talk about it. Kendo UI is something we make. So there's a lot of help. And you can make uh, progressive web apps as well, which is taking mobile web to an extreme. Your mobile website can be a very good citizen on a mobile form factor. Uh, your users can pin the app to the home screen. You can have service workers running in the background. You can do push notifications. It's a great experience. But 
uh, you are using the web as a distribution medium, right? So that may be a limiting factor for some. Uh, so if you still want to use web stuff and if you want to go to the stores, then we look at some of the hybrid or the JS native options. Hybrid is kind of where we started back in like 2010 with um, PhoneGap and Apache Cordova. Uh, I think Apache finally said uh, they're going to put that in maintenance mode, but I mean, it is a legit strategy for like simple apps, line of business apps. Um, but where hybrid apps get a little dinged on is performance because you are running inside of a web shell. So you, you're not, uh, you're not native, right? So, but you are using web technologies and packaging it up, putting it in the store. But why build hybrid when you can actually use the same tech and actually build native apps? And that's where you see the JavaScript native things kind of become popular in the last few years. Uh, we make, uh, or we used to make, and it's open source now, a framework called NativeScript, works with React, works with Vue, works with Angular. Uh, if you're doing React for your web applications, consider doing React Native so you can share code better between mobile and web. And then we have the cross-compile story, which is where Xamarin has uh, been the prominent player in the last several years. And now we see more things come up. Uh, we just had a talk on Flutter, I think. Um, there's things called uh, things like Uno platform. So lots of open source frameworks that kind of let you write higher level languages that get compiled down and at runtime you are rendering native UI with native performance and uh, full access to all of the native API stack. So why not, right? So these are some of the broad general ways in which you can build for mobile today. I'm sure I'm missing things, but these are the things that appeal the most to me. And it's a good thing that we have so much choice, right? So now having said that, let's dive into Xamarin. Uh, Cause I think uh, if you're in the session, maybe you are playing around with Xamarin, maybe you have looked at it, maybe you have some concerns. Let's uh, go all in with, uh, with Xamarin. And Xamarin essentially sits on the .NET stack, right? That .NET is what we're talking about. So a couple of uh, quick uh, pointers. This is .NET as it, uh, <coughs> excuse me, stands today, you, you may have seen these slides from Microsoft. Uh, this purple thing, that's the full .NET framework. It's been around for like 17 years now and uh, runs every app uh, that you build with .NET. .NET Core is lean, cross-platform, modular, um, runs everywhere, it's great. And then um, Mono is a port of .NET. Uh, it's about 15 years old as well. So like there was a desire to take .NET outside of Windows and that started way early uh, with .NET as well. And Xamarin actually runs on top, it, it sits on top of Mono. And Xamarin was actually an acquisition back in 2016, early 2016. And uh, what it does is it lets us, or lets Microsoft tell you the story that with .NET, you really can reach a lot of different platforms like iOS, Android, um, Tizen, web, you name it. So. Uh, that's where .NET is today, and the tools of our trade have come a long way. It's not the gigantic Visual Studio on Windows as the only thing. You do have options. Uh, I'll be on VS4 Mac today. Uh, Visual Studio Code is great. Uh, it works cross-platform, so this is fast evolving. And then this is going to be the .NET uh, starting probably about three, uh, three weeks, four weeks from now. Uh, there is a .NET Conf that's coming up um, in um, early November where they're going to formally launch .NET 5. And that's essentially a unification story. So Microsoft is essentially taking the best of Mono and best of .NET Core, putting it all together. Uh, so as developers, you don't have to be concerned as much about choosing the right runtime uh, for your apps. You just write .NET apps and it, things work. And the tools get more and more polished. Our dev cycles get uh, tighter. So uh, what's not to like? So let's talk about Xamarin real quick um, and see where things started essentially. So before we look ahead at where things are going with Xamarin, I think we need to understand where we started and where we stand today. So Xamarin um, started many, many years back and essentially they, they had a whole history of changing hands and, and maturing the framework. And where they are today is uh, trying to make, uh, make it super easy for .NET devs to take code um, uh, and uh, take it to iOS or Android or all, all of the platforms and truly native apps, cross-platform apps. So it's a great story. Um, this is kind of where Xamarin started. Uh, this is what is called Xamarin iOS or Xamarin Android. So the first trick we learned uh, how to do was uh, write some shared C-sharp business logic. So just what your app actually does, but you were still writing the platform heads by hand. So you need to, needed to know iOS uh, storyboards and Android 
uh, Java and, and, and Windows. So this was a good step in the right direction. And then we learned how to do Xamarin Forms, which was an abstraction. So now on top of C-sharp, you have a shared UI layer, which essentially is written in uh, XAML if you want it to, or it can also be written in C-sharp. And essentially, uh, this is difficult, right? You're, you're talking about three very different platforms. So the abstraction essentially takes uh, some abstracted UI, be it a button or a list view or a grid or a chart, and then it renders the corresponding native uh, UI for iOS, Android, and Windows, right? So there is a little bit of trickery. There are things called renderers that actually do that thing. Uh, but it's good to know that like the purple, the green, and the blue don't quite go away. It's nice that uh, we can start out writing XAML and C-sharp, but um, if you want it to, you can jump down into native land uh, whenever you had uh, had a need to. Okay, I'm gonna quickly read a Q&A. Uh, Q can I use native Android uh, Swift development libraries uh, XAML solution? Yes, yes. So Greg Jones was asking if you can bring in, uh, if I'm understanding that question right, if you can bring in native Xamarin libraries into Xamarin uh, or native Android libraries into Xamarin. Yeah, uh, the answer is absolutely yes. So I'll actually show you some code in, in a bit. So essentially the way Xamarin Forms works is it gives you a shared library that's uh, shared essentially between platforms. And then all platforms have their own little folders out of which you do the builds. So what you're gonna bring in for Android will just work for Android unless you provide a wrapper and then it works for other platforms as well. So yeah, anything um, native libraries that you have written for iOS or Android, absolutely, you can bring them all in. So uh, let's see where things went. So for some time, like people used to wonder like, should I do Xamarin iOS or should I do Xamarin Android? Uh, which is essentially the first uh, abstraction we talked about. And this is actually evolving into .NET for iOS and .NET for Android going into next year. Um, this is still good if you are writing very plat platform specific things. So like if you are, um, uh, if your brand is bigger than catering to iOS or Android, then you should still do this. Um, you can also embed Xamarin Forms inside of this. But again, if you ask me personally, like I would almost always start with Xamarin Forms now because again, it's a mature platform and the abstractions have come a long, long way and nothing is preventing you from customizing the renderers or going down into the native land if you need to, right? If you have something iOS specific, go render it for iOS. Nothing is stopping you, right? So I almost always start here. And then if I see a need for doing platform specific things, uh, I can always do that. So um, I, 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 you can tell I'm, I'm bullish about Xamarin Forms. Now our phones, uh, let me watch my time. So we got 45 minutes, okay. Our phones are loaded with sensors, right? You, you want camera access, you want geolocation and uh, all of that good stuff. So we used to have multiple things before. Uh, we used to have open source components uh, that were maintained by Microsoft and the community. Uh, and you had multiple things, uh, packages to deal with the same thing essentially. So Microsoft, and this is um, one of my good friends, James Maltomagno, who's a PM at Microsoft, and, and this is his baby. So essentially they took everything and consolidated that into one NuGet package, which if you're coming from the JavaScript board, that's essentially NPM, probably just done a little better. Uh, so this is Xamarin Essential, it's one NuGet package. When you bring it into your app, they are careful to do some uh, tree shaking. So if you're just using a camera, they don't like drop all of the uh, other things, uh, other APIs on your, and kind of bloat up your app package. So that they're careful about that. And, and this is great. And you're writing plain C Sharp. You don't care iOS or Android or any other platform. This just gives you that abstraction. And no matter what you're doing, you are writing a native app. Uh, I don't think the slide is entirely correct here. For uh, iOS, obviously, you're, you're doing ahead of time compilation. For Android, uh, you don't have to JIT anymore. You can absolutely pre-compile down and native APK, native uh, .app packages that you're building. So the framework, Xamarin, does not come in the way of performance. In fact, uh, I've always liked the way uh, the Xamarin folks have defined what is a native app, right? That's kind of what we are getting to. So uh, it's three things, right? Does your app have native UI? Does it have native performance and native API access and I think Xamarin Forms does check all of that. And I mean, as, as we have seen, like some of these things may be things that are that, that, that are just priorities for you. Uh, like Flutter, for example, like if you ask me, like it's it's not purely native, but it's it doesn't matter. Maybe just the performance is so good, it doesn't matter. 
and you can paint pixels with Skia Sharp and, and really have a great experience. And one of the downsides with Microsoft or Xamarin was it was a little expensive to start off. It was um, more like per developer, per platform licensing. And Microsoft took it over and said everything is free. So it's all open source. I actually do uh, look at nightly bills for Xamarin Forms once in a while. Um, so it's it's a very rich ecosystem, collaborative ecosystem that you're coming into. And, and the tools are uh, really quite mature. Yeah, turn off this little window here. Okay, so let's talk about Xamarin as it stands uh, now. And uh, what I'm talking about here is some of the improvements that have been done in the Xamarin stack to make developers more productive and more successful. So uh, I'm just pulling from uh, probably last uh, two or three releases. They do like three major releases a year and like service packs in between. Uh, so if you just look back uh, again, they're trying to give you more and more ammunition uh, in terms of UI and they're trying to tighten up the dev loop, right? So if you do JavaScript native, right? If you do React native or if you do native script or Flutter, something that you're used to is Webpack and everything is a component. It's very easy to just push out a component. Things are a little more difficult with Xamarin because things are just uh, uh, baked in and you're pre-compiling. So uh, we have learned some tricks and uh, I'll talk more about hot reload. So this is a way in which we are writing some code and seeing it work in our simulators and our devices very, very quickly. And, and this story keeps getting more flushed out. It's not just reloading on the simulators or the devices. If you have to completely do a restart uh, where you're changing some C-sharp code that really does need to be compiled, they can also be careful as to exactly what goes uh, out to the app in terms of the build and, and make it a faster loop for you. So yeah, gradients, brushes, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, lots of customizations in terms of the UI, uh, lots of love being poured in. And uh, I'll be honest, like I've been doing Xamarin for a long time. Things were painful a um, few years back, but again, the folks who are in charge um, really care uh, and, and they listen to the community and, and they're continually trying to improve things uh, for the developers. So this is uh, the hot reload that I was talking about. Essentially, um, I'll, I'll show you some code, but essentially the code that you see is XAML, which is extensible application markup language. If you have done any XAML in the, in the past, especially on the Microsoft stack, you have done maybe WPF or UWP or Silverlight. Uh, you probably should not say the Silverlight word because uh, it, it has some hurt, but it's, it's all good. We can bring over, we can migrate things fairly easily now. Um, but uh, it, this is pure XAML, perhaps a little different dialect of XAML that is catering to mobile form factors, but you can see that we can change some code and it uh, reflects on the, um, on the simulator immediately. So that, that's a good story. Okay, I think I see a question if I can make this work real quick. Uh, no, it looks like the same question. Okay, yeah. So feel free, folks, uh, to uh, type in things as we go. Oh, do, uh, there may be a chat, actually. Hang on. It was just a comment, yes. That, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, that they used to use Silverlight. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I'm old. I'm old, folks. Uh, I've done like a couple of years of Silverlight. Uh, the dev experience was great. And um, uh, perhaps uh, we are bringing XAML back to the browser as uh, if time permits, I can show you, uh, but just done better. And if you have, or if you maintain Silverlight apps, there are lots of migration paths. You can, you can go down to Blazor, you can go down to Angular, you can go do WPF. And it just depends on what platform you're wanting to support and where your code base wants to be. So um, again, lots of good things. So let's go back to Xamarin Forms. Um, a couple of quick plugs. Uh, again, mobile is hard, uh, especially when you talk about the whole life cycle. Uh, but there are things that can really help out. Like look at GitHub Actions. Uh, if you have a team and you're doing CI CD pipelines, uh, look at that. Look at Visual Studio App Center. If you don't want to go to the store, if you just want enterprise distribution, then uh, these solutions are great. Uh, I mean, there are other ones. These are the ones that I know and I use, so I, I'm happy to talk about it. So this works not just for Xamarin apps, but every type of app as well. So again, um, doing mobile, it, it needs a little bit of love and care. Okay, now let's talk about some things that are on the edges. So not directly uh, Xamarin Forms, but it has implications for uh, the things that uh, we do uh, with Xamarin. So first up, uh, Xamarin Forms is open source, right? So the community has lots of smart folks and there have been lots of pull requests uh, that have been accepted. So uh, we have learned to write renderers for other platforms, right? So the little things that turn 
uh, your abstracted code into native UI. Uh, there are now renderers for Mac OS, uh, GTK Linux, WPF. Uh, Tizen, I don't know if folks know about Tizen. If you are using any Samsung device that doesn't run Android, it's likely running Tizen. So your fridge, your TV is running Tizen and Xyron Prompts is very welcome. So uh, Xyron Prompts by nature now goes to a lot of different places, which, which is a great story. Question, uh, Greg Jones, is there a document best practices how you could recommend a mobile development shop to set up App Center? Um, I don't know if there's a document. I mean, they, uh, Microsoft Docs are really um, polished now because again, they, they listen to a lot of that feedback. So I would start with the docs, but I mean, I, I shared my, uh, my Twitter info. I, I know a couple of folks who work on the App Center. Uh, so drop me a line. I mean, if, if you're not finding what you're looking for, I'm happy to point you to a couple of folks who, who work on the team. But yeah, start with the docs. All right, so uh, let's talk about what else is happening. Um, so like I said, um, XAML informs XAML is a specific type of XAML, right? So if you wanted to do the other stuff, uh, then universal Windows platform is uh, Windows XAML and that stretches across universal within the Windows realm, but it's still a lot of devices. It's Xboxes, PCs and Surface Hubs and HoloLens. And uh, they are realizing that they cannot be as tied to Windows 10 as a runtime. Uh, so they can push out updates without the Windows releases. So you may have heard about WinUI, which is again an abstraction. So they're separating the UI stack from Windows and having that end to end. And that has actually implications for Xamarin as well, because the goal is to use WinUI to get back to uh, Windows desktop. And we are seeing dual desktop devices or dual screen devices, which is a lot of fun. We have the Surface Duo come out. Surface Neo is also scheduled to come out. So what that does is for a mobile developer, it just gives us more real estate. And you have to think about the UX. It's just more like, it's like double the real estate. How do you use it? Is it extended? Is it master detail? Is it like a competing view? Uh, so it's, it's up to you to kind of think through. And again, Xamarin Forms is there to support you. This is on the uh, Mac side of the story. Um, a lot of iOS apps now run on Mac. Uh, you just have greater real estate and you just have to redesign. Uh, and again, this is ongoing work from Apple, but all of those iOS apps can be written in Xamarin Forms, right? So it gives you uh, just a bigger chunk of a market uh, to expose your apps to. This is the Uno platform, another open source framework. Um, again, uh, this is using Windows XAML, UWP XAML. But if, if you, for some reason, if you did not want to do Xamarin Forms, then this is the XAML that you can use. Again, they stretch you to iOS or Android and they go to WebAssembly, which we'll talk about. Uh, so their WebAssembly is actually really good. But you can see like right down here, they are using Mono and Xamarin. So it's not like completely different. It is just the, the UI shell is different. And again, choice is a great thing. So let's talk about Blazor. So we have WebAssembly, which is a low level assembly like thing that your browser can execute. And it lets higher level languages be compiled down into WebAssembly and be run in the browser, just like a JavaScript engine would run JavaScript, right? So that is a great story. And Blazor is completely in the ASP.NET land. This is for web devs. This has never been for uh, mobile devs, but you can see now it has implications. So Blazor can be completely server side or Blazor can be completely like they started out with a DOM that they maintained over a signal or real time bridge, but now they can do completely client side web assembly. So C Sharp running or Rust or C++ running completely on the web um, on in your browser. And with Blazor, you can obviously do PWAs because that's the web uh, where it belongs. But you can also do things like desktop apps. Uh, please don't do Electron with Blazor because it's too heavy handed because they're, they are coming up with like lighter web shells which can run Blazor. But you can also write Xamarin apps with Blazor. So it's just a shell, one more abstraction that lets you write native cross-platform Xamarin apps, but with Blazor. If you just did not care for XAML and C-sharp, then you can do Blazor and the Razor syntax uh, towards writing Xamarin apps. All right, so we are seven minutes to the top of the hour. So I'm doing okay on time. I wanna show you some demos as we, as we get along. Let's talk about .NET MAUI. So this is a fancy new uh, catchphrase they came up with. It's multi-platform app UI. Essentially what this is, is just evolution of Xamarin Forms of where it's going. It is um, like, so Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android stay the way they are, but Xamarin Forms um, kind of evolves to kind of open up the funnels to make, uh, make it more welcoming for a few other users. Now keep in mind, like look at the targeting here. This is for .NET 6, right? So it's not for this year and it's actually coming in November of next year. So we got a long runway to get things right. 
but this will be for iOS, Android, and uh, just the things we expect for um, uh, for uh, Xamarin Forms to do just done better because they have now learned the lessons. So uh, you have your list of platforms to support uh, and all of the other things like smartphones and TVs you can obviously support. They are doing some things uh, that really help out in terms of uh, what the developers see. The uh, project structure uh, becomes much more simpler. Uh, they are much more careful as to how they handle fonts and, and images and other things. It, it's going to be a single project. So just an easier story for developers. Uh, but the biggest story is like how we are actually writing the apps. So this is the thing that most um, .NET devs are used to. Our XAML and C Sharp, we do it for WPF, we do it for UWP, and we do it for XAML forms, right? And that's a great story. It's a rich ecosystem, lots of tooling, but we sometimes don't realize that we have built ourselves kind of a walled garden. It, it's difficult for somebody new to come in, and some of the tooling can actually be a little heavy-handed. So uh, it, it's not as appealing to uh, to new, new developers, maybe. So. Um, we are trying to pivot and, and try to open up the field. Um, something that really works well with XAML and C-sharp is an MVVM design pattern. These are some popular frameworks like Xamarin Form, so Xamarin Cross or Prism. It's model view, view model, and that's something traditionally all XAML developers have done for bigger projects. It helps you keep your sanity. But we are trying to open it up again, like I said, to other design patterns. Blazor already does MVU, which is model view update. And we are trying to bring that over into, uh, into Xamarin land. We had a thing called famous or, or fabulous uh, with F sharp, but F sharp tooling isn't quite meant to go with uh, Xamarin forms tooling. So uh, what we are doing or what some really smart people, not we, not me, uh, but uh, the, the goal is with .NET MAUI, you're going to be able to do MVVM or MVU and be able to render your entire visual tree in C sharp. And essentially, this is a much more simpler pattern. It's it's sort of one-way binding, but it actually does come back and do two-way binding. Essentially, the model part of it essentially is the state of your application. This is almost like React in, in some ways. So the model drives the UI, and then anything changes in the UI, you have an update loop that comes back to update the model, and that in turn updates the UI again. So it's, it's just one continuous loop, and it's, it can be very, very fast if, if done right. So um, there are lots of opinions about this because it's a design pattern, it's open to interpretation, but uh, there are some libraries where you can, I mean, they're kind of like playgrounds. You can see what they're trying to do with uh, .NET MAUI. All right, so I'm ready to show you some stuff, but before I do, uh, just a quick shout out, um, since I work for Progress Software, uh, I do make things that, uh, we do make things that we kind of stand by. So we make .NET tooling for any platform, web, desktop, and mobile. Uh, but since we are talking about Xamarin, uh, we do make a suite called uh, UI for Xamarin, which is the grids, the charts, the uh, busy indicators, all the different things that don't come out of the box uh, that we can provide you. But by all means, look around, please. Uh, there, there is competition and everybody is trying to do the same thing uh, to elevate and make mobile developers more successful. So by all means, look around and choose the right UI for your app, but uh, don't try to reinvent the wheel. It's, it's a lot of engineering work to get this working in the first place. So unless you have a very niche use case, uh, start with something that makes you more productive. Okay, I am good on time. Look at that. I got uh, three minutes to the top of the hour and then 15 minutes more. Okay, so let's look for uh, some demos, shall we? And while I'm doing this, let me see, any questions? No, okay, folks, chime in, chime in. Don't make me lonely. So where can we start? Um, yeah, let's start here. So uh, if you have never done Xamarin, like start here, uh, do a search and you will land on the Xamarin page, uh, click on anywhere you want. Like essentially they're gonna ask you to install some tooling, which for Windows or, or, uh, or Mac, it's essentially is Visual Studio, uh, community edition onwards, it's free. And um, uh, Visual Studio used to be a gigantic install. They have trimmed it down with um, workflows. So don't look at the Azure or the web or any other workflows, just get the mobile stuff because that's what uh, has Xamarin included in it. It's still not very small because fundamentally Xamarin needs iOS and Android and all of those SDKs to be plugged in and, and working. So get all the bits and then you can start playing around. So let me show you some quick things here. This one here is a simple solution, uh, which is kind of classic way in which Xamarin Forms works. When you do file new project in Visual Studio, this is what you get. And I'm sorry if um, 
uh, if this is too bright. I'm, I'm just not a sucker for dark mode and it's, it's just completely me, I understand that. Uh, but uh, that, that's, this is how I roll. So you get a project like this, which is essentially the shared project, uh, which is a .NET standard library actually. And then for each project, you get a platform specific head or a folder. And that's what the builds start out with. So your goal uh, as a Xamarin Forms developer is to do as little as you can in the platform specific projects and do it all in the shared, uh, in the shared library. So let's take a look at uh, this little app here. And I want to show you like a couple of variations of this. So uh, I'm doing kind of a hello world thing for mobile apps, which is going out to the cloud, getting some stuff and showing a list because that, that's what most mobile apps end up being. So what I'm showing you here is uh, this little endpoint that I love hitting. It's called JSON placeholder. Um, and essentially it's got a bunch of endpoints here. This one here is what I'm using. They got to do's and comments and things like that. But when you do uh, posts, they essentially give you back some JSON and this is in Latin. So they give you about a hundred or so uh, JSON bits. So that's the endpoint we're hitting. Then I have a few uh, things set up here. Um, and keep in mind, this is all the standard projects. So this is how a Xamarin, uh, this is how a Xamarin Forms app essentially starts out. There is on start, there's on sleep, and on resume. On start is where your app starts out. On sleep is when it goes in the background. On resume is when it comes back from the background. If your app has been running for a long, long time and the user is just not using it, the OS will eventually kill it and you do not get notified when your app is killed. So please save your state on the on sleep. And then this is where we just say, that's my first page, essentially that's it. So I have, um, uh, I have a class called posts, which is essentially getting some stuff, uh, which is mirroring what my JSON uh, objects are gonna be like. And then I have a class which actually does the get. So if I can bump up the fonts here a little bit. Uh, so you'll see that I'm using HTTP client, making a simple request out to that endpoint. And when I get the response back, I'm deserializing it back into JSON. Uh, and that's my object collection, which is an observable collection. So it's a specific C-sharp generic collection that lets me bind to my UI and, and that's it. And this one, uh, it does some filtering. So this is XAML. This is kind of where like the rubber meets the road essentially. This can get a little verbose, I'll be honest. But again, if you are doing XAML, you know what you're doing uh, and there are tools that can help you out. Essentially, this one is just using a list view uh, that is going to be data bound and inside of it is a template that just shows one string. That's all we care about. And in the code behind when this page starts up on, uh, we are trying to draw the UI part of it. We're going to go get the posts from our URL and we're going to bind it to the item source property of our list view. That's it, right? So let's go ahead and run this and we shall see how this works. All right, so you have the iPhone Pro Max thing come up. I, uh, I don't know if any of you have the new iPhone 12s that came out because it's your annual ritual of giving Apple more money, which is fun. It's great hardware, right? Okay, so you get uh, a list of uh, uh, posts coming back from the URL, uh, which is perfect. That's what we want. You can, you can filter things and it's very smooth and it's, it's working fine, right? So that's kind of one-on-one. Now, let me, uh, so as you saw, like I didn't do anything that is iOS specific, but now um, if you can watch this thing here, you know where I'm going with this. I'm gonna switch this up as a startup project, right? And if I run this now without changing any code, again, this is what is possible with Xamarin Forms right now. What you get is a native um, Mac desktop application, right? It's responsive and it has that list of posts. Uh, maybe the UI can be cleaned up, but you see what I'm doing here. No change of code, Xamarin Forms just works. And essentially what we did was that's a Cocoa Pods project. And in the app delegate, uh, there is nothing Mac specific. All we did was uh, we newed up a new window and uh, that's probably too big. Uh, and when the window is done and we are about to render, we say, don't do your thing, uh, do forms.init and then load it up. So essentially we're letting Xamarin Forms drive this thing. And uh, that's how it works on, on Mac. Uh, let me see how I'm doing on time. I can show you the same demo on WPF. I can show you the same demo on Tizen. It's, it just works everywhere, right? And it, it's a good story. Uh, but let me show you some variations of this exact thing here. Okay, let me uh, close this. And let's go to uh, this one maybe. 
Okay, so this is a quick look at Blazor. Okay, and if you've never done Blazor, don't worry about it. it may not, maybe this isn't for you, but if you are a web developer on .NET stack, you are likely excited about Blazor because it, it is running C Sharp front and back, server side and client side, and it's very exciting. So what I'm showing you here is actually Xamarin Forms. I don't know if you can hear my kid shouting in the background. Sorry about that. It's the end of the day and everyone's tired. Uh, so what we are doing here is, um, if you look at the dependencies, I'm gonna pull this up here. Uh, you'll notice that there is actually no, uh, well, I mean, this one is actually using Xamarin Forms. What I was gonna say is for the other one, MVU pattern, which I'll show you. This one is using Xamarin Forms, but this one is using a wrapper called Mobile Blazor Bindings. So what we're doing here is straight up Blazor, but there is no web assembly here. There's no WASM. There, this is running as a native app. So here, uh, just the way the app starts up is a little different. Uh, this is kind of a very ASP.NET way of doing dependency injection and how you new up your components. And then I have the same exact setup. I have my posts, which is what I get back. I have my post manager that does the get, getting of the post. And then I have a Razor page, which essentially this is kind of spaghetti code, but you don't have to write it this way. Like this is my, uh, this is my UI, and then this is the code that runs technical on the server side, but there is no server side here, but it's, it's just going to all combine. You can separate out the code behind in a separate file if you want. So what this is doing, it just is one line, one label that knows how to display the title of each post. And then take a look at Hello World Razor. This is our first page. Similar idea, except we're not really writing XAML here. It kind of looks a little similar, but this is kind of almost HTML-ish. We are writing Razor syntax here because we are writing at for each. So what we did was in the code behind, we did this exact same thing of getting the posts. And when I have the posts back, we're going to iterate through that. And for each of the posts, we are going to render that. So this um, post to display essentially becomes, no, I mean, this one here, the post list, which is the Razor page this essentially becomes one component exactly right like what react would do this is the blazer component model that everybody is fond of and so we essentially iterate uh, over that and we just pass in uh, the post for each uh, uh, entity that we got back so if i go back and run this now you can see the exact same app just done differently Okay, so it looks a little different because um, uh, we don't have the filtering here, but same idea, right? So we should be able to scroll through and we get about a hundred posts and uh, it works. So if you are wanting to stick to .NET web stuff and if you would really like to do Blazor, then this is an option for you. It's still experimental, so don't do production apps yet but more than likely this will be something that will be supported in future. Now, let me show you one more thing. Um, we talked about MVU and uh, this is uh, a GitHub repo that I'm fond of. It's by a gentleman named James Clancy. He works on the Xamarin team, he's an engineer. And what they're trying to do is bring that MVU design pattern into Xamarin forms, into C Sharp. Um, so uh, again, start here, it's called Comet, Comet.io. Um, so uh, let me show you that. Let me close that and do this one here. So what you'll see here is uh, in here, unlike the Blazor one, uh, if you look at the dependencies, there is no dependency on Xamarin forms, right? Because again, you can argue that, um, like uh, this one's using uh, Comet and, and the hot reload. You can argue like the biggest strength of Xamarin forms is the renderers. The fact that you can take some XAML, you can take some C Sharp, uh, that is defining the visual tree and you can turn around and render native UI for iOS, Android and other platforms. So what if we took those renderers and we made them a little more universal? So you can use the same renderers, not just from XAML, but from other design patterns like Blazor or like, uh, like MVU. So this one here is super simple, like hello world example. Here we are defining the whole thing in C Sharp. And yes, you can argue things are a little verbose, but again, things will be cleaned up more and this is continually being worked on. So uh, VStack essentially, if you have done any XAML, essentially is a vertical stack. So we are stacking things one under another. There is an H stack, which does it horizontally. And then you have a bunch of UI controls. This one is just taking some text. And um, here 
look at the state thing here. So this is a comet state, which essentially becomes the model, right? So this is where you have your business object and all of the properties and all of the things that you have. And that is the model that your UI is gonna update on that update loop. Uh, and then that's how the whole app runs. That's essentially the state of your application. And you can keep multiple states uh, in memory uh, as you go along. So this one here has just a simple count property. And um, we are, uh, uh, we are binding the count properties value to the text property. And then there's a button increment and we just do the plus plus and that's it. So you already know how this is going to run, but let me show you anyways. Um, so you can play around with this quite a bit. Uh, again, everything is experimental. This will eventually make your make its way into dot and Maui. So you, you get uh, what we're doing here so we can increment and we don't have to touch anything because we are essentially updating the model which means that the UI will update itself. Okay, I think I saw a question come by. Two questions, okay. Okay, Joe McCormick, love the idea of using Blazor. Yes, is there a roadmap to go the other way? Basically using Xamarin from, oh, <laughs> uh, yes, Joe, yes, let me show you. Uh, and um, we have six minutes left. Uh, there's no way I can, uh, so I actually run Windows. I have a Windows box that's a virtual machine, then I have a Windows box under my desk. Uh, we won't have time to go into, go into all of that, but I can show you really quick. So uh, take a look at Uno platform. Okay. Uh, so what this will let you do, let me move the chat window here to the right, uh, which I think you, you folks don't see it. Uh, Zoom is smart. So take a look at Uno platform. I think in terms of WebAssembly support where Xamarin developers and XAML developers want to take our skills back to the web. Um, I think this is the best solution for now because they have done a lot of work on there. They have a WebAssembly playground, right? So let me, uh, it might take a bit to load. We'll see how long. So it's just called um, um, playground.platform.uno, okay? So, uh, oh, they maybe maybe have they have changed a bunch of things here. Is there? Uh, and let me see if I can move uh, this thing around. Snippets. That's a lot of snippets. Okay. Uh, uh, let me see. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's it's now on the right hand side. I'm used to it on the left. So take a look at this. Like these are all these XAML uh, UI elements that you have for UWP or Xamarin Forms, which is a different dialect. But these are essentially uh, like I think like they had a thing called animations, which was nice. Uh, they have changed around this demo, so I don't know exactly how to work it. It's, it's loading. So this is all pure XAML, just like we did in Silverlight, and it just renders uh, just fine. I think I have to hit the run to make it run. Yeah, maybe not. I mean, this is a demo you can play around with, but it's all online. And this is where Xamarin Forms developers can go back and build web applications. And you can share code between desktop and mobile and, uh, and web. So it's a good story. All right, Greg Jones is asking, how much of the framework is updated to support the latest changes? Uh, every year, Apple will not allow new apps unless they have enough to compile. Yes, yes, yes. And that is a very relevant question for all uh, oh, there is the animation, sorry. My uh, my little camera window is hiding it. So this is done purely in XAML, which is like so much fun. Sorry, I'm digressing here. Uh, yeah, maybe um, I broke a few things on my end, but you can uh, you can change some XAML, you can see this working. So uh, Greg, to answer your question, you have zero day support. So before iOS 13 comes along, before Android X comes along, um, they spend a lot of time because none, none of this is a secret that it's coming. So for months and months, Xamarin will have um, betas and previews out there. So they are trying to ride the wave and trying to be with Apple and Google. So day zero, whenever uh, an update comes out, you do have uh, updated bits for Xamarin Forms, which uh, can, can get a little tricky sometimes because like with Xamarin Forms, like if you, so Visual Studio has its own bits that it's using to do the builds, the SDKs, and then you have your simulators and you kind of have to constantly keep things updated because if it goes out of sync, then it doesn't know how to do the build and it fails on the simulator. So just stay on the cutting edge um, and then just keep, keep taking in the newest SDKs uh, if you do have that option. And yes, you will have support for uh, the latest and greatest. Okay, one more question. I got two more minutes left. Uh, or maybe that's the question I just uh, read from Craig. Okay, okay. So uh, that's uh, that's WebAssembly. That's Uno. Like I said, lots of um, flexibility nowadays with with XAML. 
You can write XAML from XAML that runs on Linux. You can write it for Tizen. You can write it for WPF and you can share code um, between like, maybe you have a WPF app and you're trying to share with some XAML forms code. You can do that. And if you want to keep an eye out or on, on like the MVU pattern and where things are headed, um, you can define the whole uh, visual tree in C Sharp in a very iterative fashion. This has like hot reload built in. So again, we are just opening up the funnel for new developers to come in and use it uh, just as easily. All right, so I'm at time almost. So let me go back and uh, uh, see where we stopped. And uh, I'll try to, I think I see a chat, so I'll try to answer one more question. So what I'm trying to say is if you are doing Xamarin forms, if you're doing XAML or C Sharp for any type of application, you are in a good place. Uh, things are evolving uh, and, and that is constant, but things are evolving for the better where we have more flexibility in how we share code and more flexibility in how we render the UI, what design patterns we, uh, we use. This is again a Microsoft slide. I mean, so you have a lot of ammunition. So let's go build the next amazing mobile app. Let's, let's go change the world. And uh, yeah, that's me again. Uh, so if you need to get hold of me, that's where I'm at. So I appreciate you. I thank you for your time. Uh, let me see chat. Uh, and it was me. I said that oh, I see. we have to finish presentation and uh, we have a couple more minutes for more questions. It's a very interesting topic. So if we go a couple of minutes over, it's okay. No, I mean, uh, I'm done. Like I said, like I can, I can show you <laughs> demos for a long, long time, but uh, uh, it's the end of the day. So let's let's have discussions. Like what uh, any any concerns, anything you like or you don't like? Because I I talk to a lot of Xamarin uh, developers and I see both sides of the story. I see uh, folks being very happy with some of the directions that we are seeing. I see some concern, um, and and the concerns are about like what happens to my existing Xamarin Forms apps. And the PMs have been telling us constantly it's going to be fine, and it really is going to be fine. They had proposed like one little namespace change between Xamarin Forms and .NET Maui, and they got a lot of pushback. So I don't think that even that is happening. So assume your Xamarin Forms apps today will just run just fine in, in .NET MAUI. So we got a long distance to go between now and um, almost end of next year to get this right. And you can envision uh, Xamarin being much more a part of .NET. Uh, you will have more confidence using the tools uh, within uh, .NET and within Visual Studio. And the dev loop gets tighter. You have more options on how to render the UI. So uh, I think it's, these are all like hell designs and uh, things for the better. Uh, in the chat. Oh, Joe, thank you. Thank you for uh, for your comment. Uh, yeah, hopefully uh, this was useful. Uh, 45 minutes of your time. Uh, you know how to get hold of me. That's that's me on Twitter. So uh, yeah, chime in and uh, we shall uh, we shall talk and uh, try to do what is right. And if something is not right, we'll share the feedback uh, with some friendly folks over at Microsoft. So um, that's it from me. Hopefully you had a wonderful day um, at All Things Open today or, and, and yesterday as well. A lot of content, uh, I'm sure. So let's all take some time to kind of assimilate all that knowledge and uh, apply them to our projects and, and to our apps. So yeah, that's it from me. Have a great rest of your day. Olena, thank you for hosting us. And yeah, that's it. <laughs>